In this chapter, we will learn on how to use the Enterprise Manager with the Rack environment. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and open our Enterprise Manager utility. So let me go over here to our web browser and type in HTTPS because in 11GR2 environment, it's an HTTPS connection forward slash rack one colon 1158 forward slash EM. It's going to go ahead and prompt me for a username. And here I'm going to use system with the password of one. And I can use any account that has access to the Enterprise Manager. Here I'm just using system. Now, a couple things to note in a clustered environment within OEM. The very first thing that we see is over here, we have two tabs. We have the database tab and we have the cluster tab. The database tab is going to give us our typical database information. So here we see the home page, and at the home page, we can see that we have two instances and they're both up and running. It's associated to the cluster rack scan. The database name is ORCL and it's version 11.2.1. If I scroll down here a little bit, I can see that this database is made up of two instances, ORCL1 and ORCL2, and then these are the hosts that they reside on. So let me scroll up here just a little bit farther, and then I get my same information, my space utilization. This database is consuming about 1.3 gigs in space, and this is when the last backup was created. This is the flash recovery area that I have, and I'm not using flashback logging. I can come over here to my typical performance tab, and under my performance tab, I'm gonna get information about the overall database performance. And it's gonna give me things like the load average and the cluster block access latency, average active sessions, typical things that I would normally see in an enterprise manager environment. Now, if I come to the availability tab, in the availability tab, I can have my typical backup settings, recovery settings, schedule my backup. Here I'm looking at database specific, but if I wanna look at a specific instance, I can drill down into that specific instance and get information regarding that specific instance. So here, if I look at the performance, this is gonna give me performance at that individual instance level, not at the overall cluster database level. So this is giving me the host information, average active sessions per instance. And if I scroll down here, I can get throughput, IO, services, those things per instance. Within the server tab, Again, I can look at the initialization parameters. And if I look at the initialization parameters, and this is important, it's only going to give me the initialization parameters that are for that specific instance. Keep in mind here, these are this instance's initialization parameters. If I come back to the cluster database over here and I look at its initialization parameters, you can see here it's broken down by instance. With an asterisk, that means all instances within the rack. Here, if it does not have an asterisk and it has an instance name, here we're saying that this particular parameter applies exclusively to that particular instance in the Rack environment. So in your typical OEM environment, if I scroll up here a little bit, we have a database and there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the instance and the database. But in a clustered environment, we have the cluster database information. And then I can scroll down and I can drill down and look at specific instance information for that overall database. The other thing I can look at is at the cluster level. This is gonna give me network configuration. Here, if I look at the performance tab under the rack scan, this is gonna give me overall CPU utilization, memory utilization for the overall cluster in and of itself, but it will break it down by each individual node. So here in a second, I'm gonna get CPU utilization and memory utilization, and you can see here, it's gonna break it down by each individual node within the cluster. Now, if I look at the interconnects, under the interconnects, this is going to be my networking configuration. And I'm gonna look at things like private interconnect transfer rate. Then I can also look at the rate of the NIC cards or the activity of the NIC cards. And here on rack one for ETH1, this is its total IO rate and the total error rate. Here on rack two, ETH1, this is its total IO rate. So we can see that rack two is not near as busy as rack one. And that could just be as far as load or how people are connecting or whatever. But if we see this spiking up, we might wanna balance out the load a little bit. So one and two are a little bit more even. And then I can look at the overall interfaces by the cluster database. What we have here, if I scroll up in the OEM environment, we have the ability to look at our cluster at two levels. One is the overall cluster itself. I come back here at the home. The cluster itself is gonna consist of several instances, the grid infrastructure architecture, your networking, all of those things. 
but the database tab is going to give us the ability to look at information at the database level. I'm going to go ahead and log out of here. And let me go ahead and log back in. And now when I look at the overall database, the database tab is going to give me information. Okay, these are the instances that are associated with the database. Are they up? Yes or no. This is the amount of CPU that's being utilized, the active sessions, the space summary, the high availability. So OEM gives me that capability of looking at it at two levels. Number one, the cluster. Number two, the database.